I hear it's going to be a party of special magnificence. Look, just like everyone else, you want to be happy. But first, you got to know what causes satisfaction. <laughs> No! Oh, you asshole, money can't make you happy. It's just a tool. It's just a means, useful for creating order in your life. Use it to pay your bills, to buy your food, to buy your clothing, and to keep you from ending up face down in the gutter. And ultimately, money is used to create relationships. But money is passive. It can't do anything without your permission. You still have to be the active one creating order. But to create order, you got to learn how to remove disorder. That means getting rid of the disorder inside you and the disorder all around you. First, let's start with the inside. As an emasculated male, you have no idea what constitutes manhood. Because feminism is so deeply ingrained in our society, you're constantly stuck listening to these fags. We feel deep love, great respect, and a growing sense of worship for the gifts of the feminine. Know your role and shut your mouth! Then you have your emasculated white knights. These guys are trying to be seen as hip and progressive, but they're really just pussy whip guys. Undercover feminists who advocate giving special rights to women. Okay, then you're stuck with pickup artists and their con artist bullshit. They teach you that wearing fuzzy top hats, goggles, and learning overly complex systems to attract women is the way to achieve manhood. Okay, it's simple. You first find out who you are, and then you bring that out, and then you show it to the world, and then you cultivate it, and you make it better, and then you learn lots of techniques, and then you become really good, and then you start to show it all off, and lots of women, and then become some big ladies, and then do it well. Then on top of all that confusion, you got guys like Tom Likas, who advocate a cultural definition of masculinity. He'll teach you things like, if you don't pee standing up, you're not a real man. All this alpha male bullshit is a complete myth. Finally, you have asshole feminists parroting the very notion of masculinity. Their goal is to shame you from even discovering your male function. Respect the cock and tame the cunt. I am the one who's in charge. We are... Men! Ha! Gay! There are so many confusing definitions of manhood, it's no wonder you have no idea how a man should behave. So what does it really mean to be a man? To answer that question, we gotta take a look at order. Order simply means that everything is arranged in the best way possible, or it's in the best possible condition. When things are orderly, they're functioning at their highest capacity. Growing a beard, being able to bench press 300 pounds, or being the starting linebacker on a football team does not mean that you're functioning at your highest capacity. These are all cultural definitions of manhood, but not a functional definition of manhood. Being a man simply means you're able to exercise your authority to create order. This is your highest function as a man, to create order and to bring order into your relationships. What does this mean in practical terms, though? It means that you're able to take charge of your relationships, especially with women. Uh, man talk. You don't compromise, you don't negotiate, you simply dictate the terms of the relationship. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. But that sounds like misogyny. Aren't men and women supposed to be equal in relationships? I don't want to be a dictator in a relationship. I don't want to be the bad guy. <sighs> Look, you asshole. The problem is you've been paying too much attention to feminism and not enough attention to common sense. Men and women are different in function. That doesn't mean they're not equal in worth. It means that they both play different roles in order for the relationship to work. As a man, your job is to lead. As a woman, her job is to follow. This doesn't make you a dictator, this doesn't make you evil, this doesn't make you the bad guy. It makes you a functioning, competent man. The only way you'll be viewed as a dictator is if you're not meeting the needs of those who are under your authority. So if you're not taking care of a woman in a relationship when you're in charge of that relationship, then yes, you'll be a dictator. So how do we know women want you to be in charge? Did you know that the most common fantasy for women is a rape fantasy? Do you know why bondage stories like Fifty Shades of Grey are so popular with women today? Do you know why women get sexually excited by guys they refer to as assholes? Since it wasn't due till Monday. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey! Think but fly! Because women respond to authority. Honestly, in my opinion, I like guys to have control. I like a confident person. I like somebody who knows what they want. I think a guy should take initiative. No, I don't like any sex with guys. I like a guy who's assertive. They want authoritative guys in their lives to lead them, to direct them, to dictate the terms of the relationship. That's what's wrong with you. You should be kissed and off, and by someone who knows how. And what's the end result? A satisfied woman. Mm -hmm. When you're being called an asshole, it's not because you're evil. It's because you're not giving a woman her way. But guess what? When you're able to set a boundary and a limitation on a woman... No! 
she responds with affection. She gives you her deepest love. If you're a parent raising a child and you give that child everything it wants, you're going to create a spoiled, rotten brat. But if you're a responsible parent and you meet that child's needs while restricting its bad behavior, Stop whining. You lack discipline. But I've got news for you. You are mine now. You will create a solid, loving relationship with that child. The same goes for women. As a man, you need to be able to say no to bad behavior. You need to say no when she's acting like a bitch. If you can't say no to bitch behavior, you're fucked. This means you're going to end up in the friend zone or your relationship is going to deteriorate to the point where she just gets bored and she leaves. No authority equals no basis for romance. You can't like somebody who's just a dummy doing what you want them yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. But there's a catch. Being in charge comes with a lot of responsibility. That means you have to meet the needs of those under your authority. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. So if you're in a relationship with a woman, you have to meet her needs. You have to lead her. You have to take care of her. You have to be willing to assume responsibility for her behavior. And because feminism has lied to her and taught her that she can only be valuable if she acts like a man, you have to teach her that she's valuable as a woman. But that goes against, like, feminism. Yeah, don't fucking worry about that. The only thing feminism achieved for relationships is an over 50% divorce rate. This is why it's crucial to be in charge of your relationship. To accomplish this, you need to learn how to exercise your authority properly over a woman. Having authority simply means having control of the relationship. You should be in control of your relationship at all times. And in order to maintain control of a relationship, you have to learn how to properly reward good behavior and punish bad behavior. There are two major components of authority. Pleasure and pain. If your authority is missing either of these two elements, nobody will care about your authority. Pleasure makes people happy. When people experience pleasure because of their behavior, they're encouraged to repeat that behavior. But if you can't make people happy, nobody will want to be governed by you. Pain, on the other hand, is necessary to stop bad behavior. Fucking ass! Shut that cunt's mouth or I'll come over there and fuck start her head! Pain exposes disorder and dysfunction. For example, when your body's in pain, you know there's a problem with it. Likewise, when people experience pain because of their behavior, they realize there's a problem with their behavior. I don't know. So to exercise your authority simply means to apply pain or to apply pleasure when it's appropriate, when it's merited. This means you're going to punish or reward when the person deserves it. When you first reward somebody, you're establishing your authority. You're letting others know that your authority can meet their needs. This gives them the necessary incentive to both listen to you and obey you. On the other hand, it's necessary to maintain your authority by punishing bad behavior. This lets people know that you have expectations that matter. Your authority should be respected. To be respected means to be feared. Fear is a good thing. Fear is not like terror. When you're terrorized by something, you're afraid of being punished arbitrarily, without rhyme or reason. When you can't predict what behavior will cause punishment, you feel paralyzed with terror. Fear, on the other hand, is a good thing. For example, when you stand near a cliff, you fear gravity, you fear falling off the edge. But the difference is you know exactly what behavior will bring that punishment. Thus, even though you fear falling off the cliff, you have a stable relationship with gravity. You aren't paralyzed by gravity's punishment because you know exactly what behavior will cause the punishment. So when you're maintaining your authority, it's extremely important to only punish when it's merited, not arbitrarily, without rhyme or reason. Although rewarding those under your authority will cause great affection from them, only proper punishment will cause them to feel the deepest love for you. So don't just be the person who provides food, clothing, and shelter. You also have to be the guy who sets boundaries and limitations on people. 